This Dicebreaker video is sponsored by Wild Bills. Ditch the manufactured flavours. Your taste buds deserve better. Treat yourself to Wild Bills premium handcrafted soda pop. Mouthwatering beverages that allow you to escape to the most interesting places imaginable. Cheers to refusing the drink from the mainstream. Cheers to kick-ass canned. Cheers to being veteran-owned and operated. At Wild Bills, flavour isn't everything. It's the only thing. Use discount code CHEERS15 for 15% off your first order. Hello all, it's September, and for most of you that means dressing up a bit warmer, noticing the hint of change in the colour of the leaves, and wondering when the clocks are going back this year. Well, for me, it's officially spooky season, dorks! Bring out the pumpkins, break out the horror films, and set up some jump scares, because I've got a super spooky Halloween to do so. <laughs> Something else that gets my 1958 Plymouth Fury revving is playing an unsettling game or two. No, I'm not talking about settling down with a cup of tea to solve the lament configuration. I mean one of the fabulous board games from the last few years that take our greatest fears and make a scenario that Freddy Krueger would be proud of. Though he would likely suggest more uses of a certain word beginning with the letter B. You're probably itching to hear more about this video's subject matter, so I'll stop making stupid horror references and move on. Released in 2015, Libelou's Mysterium immerses players in the world of 1920s Scotland, where a Mr. McDowell has recently inherited an old family manor that he believes is certainly haunted. Come together with your fellow psychics to hold a seance devised to understand the message of a restless spirit whose death was likely the result of foul play. Expand your mind and grab a planchette, because I'm about to tell you why you should play Mysterium. Mysterium is a game for between two to seven players, but we would say it works best with between four and six players, bearing in mind that one player will always take up the role of the ghost. The rest of the players are assuming the roles of psychics, who must use their link to the other side to determine the cause of their death. More specifically, the who, where, and how surrounding the ghost's death. You'd be forgiven if Cluedo and or Clue immediately sprung to mind when hearing this premise, but your deadly deduction in Mysterium must be supported with the help of a silent ghost, presenting you with visions to lead you in the right direction. There are three stages of gameplay that players will go through, identifying the murderer, the location, and the murder weapon. However, this poor ghost is suffering with amnesia and can't quite recall who exactly did the heinous deed. This is why several suspects are laid out, along with possible locations and weapons that the ghost must secretly assign to each psychic. Once the ghost has assigned each medium with their potential culprit, they and the investigators have seven hours, or seven rounds of gameplay, to present and correctly interpret the visions the ghost sends to them. These visions come in the form of vision cards, of which the ghost randomly draws up to seven at the start of each round. With the ghost being landed with vision cards that might not necessarily have been their first choice, sometimes huge leaps are needed to understand what they were going for. <laughs> You might think this sounds like a simple task, but I'm about to tell you why that's incorrect and why you should feel bad about assuming that. This card could be seen as signifying a murderer with a penchant for music, like this composer. But perhaps it's meant to represent the bag of cotton that the seamstress is working with, due to the abundance of fluffy dandelions surrounding the music box. Things get a bit more complicated when we move on to location. Is this card meant to highlight the maritime enthusiast's study, or is the waterside meant to lead you towards the desolate looking pool on this card? And then, finally, you're on to the murder weapon, the hardest to identify because it's so simple. This card could easily be leading us to the pliers due to the sharp blades present. But there's also a frayed rope right there and <gasps> what do we have here? It's a rope! It really is a game that thrives on getting inside the head of the ghost, and fast, because the only way to win this game is if everyone reaches the final round before the clock strikes seven. Otherwise, the game is over, and the angry and misunderstood spirit will never rest. In other words, everyone will be really disappointed. Throughout the game, each medium will have clairvoyancy tokens to use. This clever system allows you to really give yourself an edge if and when you reach the final round. 
When a medium makes a guess on what the ghost is trying to communicate to them, the other players can place their tokens down after that decision has been made. They will either indicate that they agree with the medium's guess or that they disagree with it. If they are correct, they are able to move up on the clairvoyance track. The number of points that each investigator racks up on the clairvoyance track will determine how clearly they see the ghost's final vision. If you have gained between 0 and 4 clairvoyancy points during the gameplay, you will see one final vision card. If you have scored between 5 and 6, you will see two final vision cards. And if you have scored 7 or more, nice, but also the ghost will bequeath unto thee the viewing of all three final vision cards. The number of cards available to you in the final round can be make or break, as you will see these final cards in a random order. The first card revealed could lead you in a completely wrong direction, which is why it is important to try and gain as many clairvoyancy tokens as possible throughout the game. Once every player has their vision cards at the ready, kindly provided by the ghost, the sand timer flips and they have two minutes to interpret their visions and pop some clairvoyancy tokens down. No sweat! Well, the ghost has a lot riding on this, so they're probably sweating. Can ghosts sweat? A few reasons this sensational psychic simulator is so stimulating is its beautifully designed vision cards. Just look at these babies! Xavier Collette and Igor Berlikov deserve an award for this artwork. Okay, it has won several awards for that. Each one of these vision cards gives off the exact right amount of whimsy, uncertainty, and dread that you would expect from the situation you find yourselves confronted with in the game. Like, what on earth is this? Or this? Or that? I'm still discovering new cards in this game that are a marvel to observe, but a nightmare to interpret. Which cards are your favorite? Here's mine. Look at these cats in a jar. Excellent work. Another reason this game sits so well with board game enthusiasts is because so many elements of the gameplay take inspiration from the OG murder mystery board game, Cluedo slash Clue. If you love Cluedo but have played it to death, huh, then it might be time to pick up Mysterium. Less cut and dry than Cluedo and involving much more interaction between players, whether they can speak or not. Mysterium refreshes the classic detective game format in a really interesting way. In case you haven't picked up on it by now, I'm a musical theatre kid, and that translates into me taking any opportunity to roleplay and running with it. Whether I'm playing a mystical medium or a gold ghost, you would better believe I'll be hamming it up. You might be asking how that's possible when you're the silent ghost. Well, ghosts have to get their point across in other ways, like shaking the table, throwing objects, or screeching unintelligibly. Hey, For real though, try dimming the lights, lighting some candles, and adding some spooky ambient music to set the tone. Mysterium's own website even has a playlist of suitably scary music ready for you to use. If you've played Mysterium and thought it was a tad easy, why not try limiting your crows? And by that, I mean limiting the times you can swap out your vision cards for a brand new set as you play the ghost. The Crow Mulligan can make the game a whole lot easier, and so limiting it might give this game the extra challenge you're seeking. We have compared Mysterium to Cluedo a lot, and for good reason, but the only thing that Cluedo does better than Mysterium in our eyes is deliver an iconic cast of characters. I haven't played Cluedo in years, but I can still rattle off the names of Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, and Miss Scarlet to you without even thinking, and I only had a crush on one of them. Mysterium is a delight to play at any time of year, but now that spooky season is upon us, why not break it out and tell us how much the player acting as the ghost suffered? Thank you so much for watching this Why You Should Play video! <laughs> Mysterium is one of my favourite games, and hopefully this video did a pretty good job explaining why. If you want to hear more from myself and the rest of the fantastic Dicebreaker team, you can subscribe to us and hit the notification bell, so that you can see whenever we post a new video or go live. Don't forget to check out Dicebreaker.com's fantastic articles written by Matt Jarvis, Alex Meehan, Chase Carter, and our fabulous contributors. Also, check out this hoodie! It not it cool as heck? Look at how cool this hoodie is! Look, it's a, were it's a werewolf thing! How cool is that? I really like werewolf. Well, if you'd like to get your own, you can check out the merch link in the description and follow it and <laughs> so, do it. <laughs> we hope to catch you again soon, but for now, have a lovely day. 
Bye.